This morning, uh, Pastor talked about Lent. This is the beginning of the Lenten season and the sacrifice that God made for us. And if we truly believe that Jesus came from heaven, was crucified, dead, buried, and raised again, then surely we can declare tonight that nothing is impossible through him. Let's stand together and sing that. I can do anything, I can do all things, cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible, through you blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken, I'm living by faith. Nothing is impossible. not gonna live by what I see. I'm not gonna live by what I feel. Deep down I know that you're here with me. I know that you can do Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I'm living by faith Nothing is impossible I'm not going to live by what I see. I'm not going to live by what I feel. Deep down I know that you're here with me. I know that you can do Nothing is impossible through you. Blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I'm living by faith. Nothing is impossible. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Sing it out. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I'm living by faith Nothing is impossible I believe, I believe I believe, I believe in you I believe, I believe, sing one more time. I believe, I believe in you. Amen. Let's give him praise tonight. That's right. Come on. Sing out, you are good. You are good, you are good. When there's nothing good in me. You are love, 
you are love on display for all to see you are light you are light when the darkness closes in you are hope you are hope you have covered all my sin you are peace you are peace you are peace when my fear is crippling you are true you are true even in my wandering you are joy you are joy for the reason that i sing you are life you are life in you death has lost its sting and oh i'm running to your arms i'm running to your arms the riches of your at this time, you're invited to come down and meet Pastor Kim for a sermon in a sack. Ryan to help me tonight, and I've got a couple things in the sack, and she's going to help guess the story this time instead of me guessing. You ready? It's kind of hard, but I'll help you. All right, can you pull something out of the sack? See if they can guess what it is. What is that? Pants? Are those yours, Amy? You don't know? I don't think they are. Are these yours, Aaron? No? They're kind of big, aren't they? I know they're not going to fit some of my taller people, so we got a pair of pants. Any ideas what in the Bible might remind us of a pair of pants? I didn't expect you to guess that one. Okay, you'll have to pull out another clue. Okay, what is this? Is this an applesauce packet? No, it's not applesauce. What's in there? What's tied? 
Laundry soap. So we got laundry soap and we got a pair of pants. Any ideas? Might have something to do with the book of Psalms. All right, help us out. We got something else in there. Do you know what that is? What is that? Dry cloth. I don't like cloth. Someone else said another word. What did you say? Lint. Got some lint here, kind of fuzzy stuff that you pull out of your dryer after you've cleaned your clothes, dried your clothes. So we've got some lint. We've got some detergent and a pair of pants. Now, is this what we talked about this morning in Kids Church? Sort of, but not really. What is that word? Lint with an E. Which, what, what is lint with an E? What? When we talked this morning, do you remember what lint? Okay. We talked about giving up something, and it's the period of time before, before Easter, the 40 days, right? Okay, so, but this isn't the same thing, right? This is lint with an I. So if I take the I, take the E out and put an I there, we've got lint. So it doesn't have to do with this morning's lesson. So what do you think it might have something to do with? Well, if you take a pair of pants and you put these stinky pants in the washer and you put some detergent in there and you turn it on because you have to turn it on and you leave it for a little bit, what's going to happen to these pair of pants? Are they going to get worse or better? Are they going to smell fresh? Are they going to smell kind of stinky? Fresh and clean? Do you guys like to get your clothes out of the washer when they smell nice and clean? Yeah. They're wet, so what do I have to do with them now? Now that they're clean, put them in the dryer, and when we put them in the dryer, then we get this special stuff called lint, right? And, it, and lint, is, do we keep this? I mean, do you take the lint out of your dryer and you put it in a Ziploc bag and you save it forever, like with your first tooth and your first lock of hair? No? You put it in the trash can and you don't keep it? No, it's not worth anything, is it? But the funny thing about lint is it reminds us of something. It reminds us when we pull that out. I hate cleaning lint out of the dryer. You can ask Dr. Scott. He's always reminding me that I have to pull that stuff out of the dryer every load, right? I kind of sometimes forget and wait a few loads. But that nasty stuff in the dryer called lint, it reminds me of something. When I pull it out, I could grumble and complain and go, ugh, pull that stuff out of the dryer again. Or I could think and remember, you know what? Every time I pull that out, that means I have a clean pair of pants to wear and a clean shirt and clean clothes, right? It reminds me of something good. Just like we're celebrating what Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. Well, this also reminds me of something else. Can you read the scripture for, verse for us? So next time I wash the laundry, I'm going to remember this verse. Wash away my in, iniquity and clean me from my sin. Poems 5-2. Wash me, and I will be white than snow. By Psalms 517b. All right, so it, the verse in Psalms says, Wash me and cleanse me from my sin. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. And it's kind of like this. Does Jesus put us inside the washing machine and wash us? Is it, no, he doesn't. No, but what does it mean? What does the Bible mean when it says that if we're washed, we'll be cleansed from our sin? How do we get cleansed from our sin? Ask God for forgiveness, don't we? And he clean, cleans us. It's like we're a pair of jeans thrown in a washer and we come out clean. When we ask God for forgiveness from our sin, from the bad things we do, he clean, cleanses our heart, doesn't he? And he makes us a new person inside. All right, good job. All right, you bow your heads and we'll have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for the sacrifice you made on the cross for each of us. I pray, Lord, that you will help us to be clean and washed from our sins and our iniquities and that will serve you with our whole heart. Thank you for loving us and dying on the cross so we can be forgiven. In Jesus' name, amen.
as we continue in worship, if you'd like to follow along in the hymnal, we're going to sing together. Wonderful. I don't have the hymn number. It's in the back. So let's sing together. Wonderful. Three seventy-seven. Oh, my heart sings today, sings for joy and gladness. Jesus saves, satisfies, takes away my sadness. Guilt is gone, peace is mine, peace like to a river. Jesus is wonderful, mighty to deliver. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Once a slave, now I'm free, free from condemnation. Jesus gives liberty and a full salvation. Now the sins of the past have been all forgiven, and my name is inscribed in the book of heaven. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Living here with my Lord in a holy union, day by day all the way, holding sweet communion. Oh, what change grace I brought in my lowly station, since my soul has received full and free salvation. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me. Counselor, Prince of Peace, mighty God is He. Saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Now in my heart there rings a melody, number 350. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. a melody, there rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. T'will be my endless theme in glory, with the angels I will sing. T'will be a song with glorious harmony, when the chords of heaven ring, and in my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. This evening, can you say that there rings a melody of love in your heart? Amen.
I was enjoying singing the hymn too much. Forgot I was up next. <laughs> well, do you have prayer requests? I'm not sure that we want to remember Brother Delon is in the hospital. We need to continue to pray for him. And Frankie, if uh, you heard from her lately, she she told us the other day, she says, I'm going to walk out of here. And uh, so let's continue to pray for Frankie. Other requests. If you've got a short request, I'll repeat it if you speak it up nice and loud. If you don't, I won't hear it. <laughs> All right. Well, it's time to receive the offering. Is someone going to pray for us? All right. Zane. Lord Jesus, thank you for today and thank you for many blessings. Um, thank you for a beautiful day. And uh, we humble ourselves before you and ask for your blessing unto us. And um, we ask you to answer our prayer requests, those both said and unsaid. Um, you know what we need, and you truly are the God of us and um, the protector of us. Lord Jesus, um, help us have an open heart towards offering today and um, give with an open heart. And again, I thank you for everything you've done for us. And the one I pray, amen. Well, good evening. It's good to see you. Have you had a good day? I was just thinking, someone share with us your favorite, all-time favorite Valentine gift. What's your all-time favorite Valentine gift? Any Anybody? No gifts. Okay, what's your favorite all-time gift? You're going to embarrass your wife. Okay. Oh, there's a microphone right there. <laughs> we want this to go around the world. <laughs> you know, it's safe to say in church. Um, when we were dating, and uh, before she used the L word, the I love you, you know, we'd been corresponding quite a bit, and we'd been getting to know each other and, and dating. Um, on Valentine's Day, she took a cardboard card, and she took all those little hearts, those candy hearts that have all the little things on them. And she made this beautiful paragraph, that, and she interspersed them in amongst this paragraph. And it was the first time that I could tell that she was going to use the L word. <laughs> and that was my favorite Valentine. That's great. Good. The L word. Yes, ma'am. Do you remember a favorite Valentine gift? Praying to God, that's a beautiful gift. That's an awesome gift. So, somebody else, your favorite, all-time favorite Valentine gift. Yes, sir. Can candy? My favorite Valentine gift is candy. Uh, that's a, a man after, that knows his, his heart there. Yes, ma'am. 
Your family, well, that's a great gift. Good, good. All right, come on, ladies. Red roses. Should we ask how many? What you? A dozen red roses. Very, very good. Well, uh, remember, Lent is in Valentine. And uh, three thoughts from this morning. We should be responding. And the second one word was commit. And the last word was that of sacrifice. So, well, what about in Scripture? What about, uh, what love stories come to your mind in Scripture? Ruth and Boaz. I'm sorry? So, Mary and Joseph? Jacob and Rebecca? Jacob goes with Rachel. Rachel. And uh, that poor guy had to work uh, 14 years for his wife. So, Abraham and Sarah. Paul and Nettie. I haven't read that story in the Bible. I, that'd be good one. Well, I want to uh, 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 read a little bit of the passage. At, uh, 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 Troy had the first part of the name right, Rebecca and Isaac. I want to read a little bit of Isaac and Rebecca's story and, and talk a little bit about it. It's found in Genesis chapter 24. And so uh, I'm going to kind of read and stop a little bit and add a little commentary along the way. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, just keep them open, and, and uh, we will go along there. As uh, Just some thoughts as I read through this today, thinking about Valentine, thinking about... Uh, I, I don't know that I would call this passage a love story uh, because of the uniqueness of the story, but it's about a relationship uh, and so uh, I kind of picked it out for tonight. A uh, Genesis 24, beginning in verse 1. Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. Now let me just say before we go any further, I, I, as I read this story again today, thinking about Valentine's Day, thinking about love, I'm thinking, okay, God, you need to help me grasp something from this passage of story, this scripture, this story of, of uh, uh, this relationship that occurs. Because uh, as I read through it initially, I'm thinking, what does this have to do with me and the way that I live my life now? I mean, I know that Abraham was, was a, a significant part of, of the Old Testament, a significant part of, of our understanding of God's desire to be in a relationship and to guide people. But what does this story of Isaac have to do, Isaac and Rebecca, have to do with me, with us? So that's what I, I want to try to pull some things out of the story that I think will fit with how we live our life today. So Abraham was now very old and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the senior servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not, you will not get a wife for my son from the daughter of the Canaanites among whom I, live, I am living, but you will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. Oh, wow. Okay, dads, how many of you want to pick your, or send your servant, or send someone, your trusted friend, to go find a wife for your, your son? I mean, anybody want to volunteer for that? Any of you want to be brave enough to say, I'm going to go out, I'm going to send somebody? Well, in this particular case, there's something that I think is, is significant. As we look at the story, we see that I see that this story is uh, parallels God's desire for us 
to be into a relationship with, with him in such a way that he would send his servant, his son, to a faraway land to build a relationship and make a provision so that we could enter into this relationship or renew, restore this relationship with God. So as you think of this story now, as we continue to read through it, I want you to think of it in terms of, of being a, a story that's helping us understand God's love for us, that he would so desire that, that he would send Jesus, his trusted servant, to find those, a, 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 a wife for the bride or for the groom, okay? I, I'm getting my words a little confused there, but stick with me here. So God, Abraham trusted his servant. God trusted Jesus. And I believe that God is trusting us to be his servant to go and find a bride for the groom. So as we think about that, who is the bridegroom? Jesus, the Savior. And, and so he trusts us enough. If we are his servant, he wants to entrust us and empower us to be one that will go into a faraway land, to go into the midst of the people, his people, the people that he created, and find them to bring them to Christ. God trusts us. Enough. Now, what does trust mean? If you're trustworthy, it means that you're what? Dependable. I, I mean, Abraham depended upon this servant. He trusted him. He put everything in his household into uh, his hands. Abraham was old. It appears as if he, he was not in a position to really care for all of his his belongings, his possessions, his properties, and so he trusted this servant enough. He depended upon this servant. He knew that his servant was true to his word, that he was not a liar. And, and so I begin to think, okay, do I understand that God trusts me? He trusts you enough to put into your hands his property, his possessions, his, his heart to go find a wife for Isaac. I, I just, I don't know that I'm conveying this to you, but I, that's just, that's incredible. That God trusts us enough, that he depends upon us enough. That he wants to send us into our world, to our workplaces, to our neighborhoods, to our schools, to our surroundings. He trusts us enough that he would give to us the message, the power to look for those that might be the bride to the groom. And that we would bring them together. Well, so now here's this servant. I mean, I... Mean, I, I I'm, through, I'm sure that he was thrilled that his master trusted him enough, but I can't imagine having that responsibility. And, and I think I would have asked probably a lot more questions than he asked. But over in um, verse 5, he says, The servant asked Abraham, What if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Shall I then take your son back to the country you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household in my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me an oath, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. 
Then the servant left, taking with him ten of his master's camels, loaded with all kinds of good things from his master. He set out from Aram, Nahariam, and made his way to the town of Nahar. He had the camels kneel down near the well outside of the town. It was toward evening, the time the women came, the women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. Okay, so here we are now. Think again into this whole idea that God has entrusted with us his heart's desire that we would go out into our world and find a bride to bring to the bridegroom. I, I think we could probably say to bring a sinner to the Savior. Do, do you catch that God has entrusted you with that desire or with his desire for us? He's, he's put his, his trust in us that we would so go out and, and live our lives around us that he would want us to impact those. So here's the servant. He gets into his, his uh, master's homeland and he does something. What does he do? What did he do? What did we say? Verse 12, then he prayed. There's the, a significant key for us as we discover that God wants us to reach into our community, into our world around us. He wants us to be committed to believe that he will provide for us. I know that most of us, at least for me, and let me speak for myself, not for you. I just don't know who it is that God wants me to, to, to reach out to. I mean, I, I, I stutter sometimes. I, I, I sometimes don't know that I have the right words to say. But if I will but pray, the angel of the Lord will show us and take us to the right place. I, I think that's why corporate prayer should be a priority in our lives. That's why, as, as pastor, I, I, I want us to gather together to pray. I, I, I love the fact, and, and several of you gather together on Sunday mornings at 8.30. And, and uh, some of you come over on, on Monday nights to our house. Most every Monday night, we gather together and we pray. And, and yes, we pray for some of the uh, uh, needs of the people, but we also need to be praying for the lost praying that the Lord would give us an opportunity. Prayer needs to be a priority in the life of the believer, in the life of the congregation. We need to be praying. Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, I know that Brett and, and some of the youth workers gather together, and it's not just limited to youth workers. Any one of you are invited to come, and, and they meet down the end of the hallway in the senior high classroom and, and praying for the young people, praying that there would be something that, that would happen in their hearts that would cause them to long to discover the Savior. And, and those times aren't the, the uh, sure are all, fire all kind of things, but yet we need to work together to pray, to seek God, to find His place that he wants to put us so that we can find the right bride. Now, the second thing that happens here is he began to develop a plan. So he's praying. He's asking God, okay, what do I need to do? And then he, he comes up with this plan. Then he prayed, Lord God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, 
Please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, Drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. He has a plan. He's praying. He's asking the Lord God of of Abraham, give me, provide for me, bring success to me. And here is a plan to help me discern what you want me to do. So I think that as we begin to think about and pray about what it is, who it is that God wants us to go to, we need to begin to work to develop a plan. And so my question for you is, are you praying to be the trusted servant? And if we are praying to be the trusted servant, then what plan are we going to use to to find the right person, to find the bride? Uh, Here at the church, uh, I mean, we we work uh, to put together services, uh, but you know, really, our services are are not really designed to reach the lost. Our our services really are designed to to edify the believer. I mean, think about it for a moment. The songs that we sing, the prayers that we pray, even the messages that we preach, they're really designed to edify the church, the the believers. So what is our plan to reach the lost? Well, one idea that we have is we're building a mission field. Do you remember that? Have you heard me say that? We're actually building a mission field. We put a year ago, a little longer than a year ago, a playground and a pavilion. Now we're putting in a splash pad, and we believe that that is going to be a mission field. I've talked to a few people in the community. First of all, they can't believe that a church that we're putting in a splat. In fact, one guy said to me the other day when he asked me about, well, what's going on at your church? And I told him about the the splash pad. And his first thing was, well, is that just for your church? I said, no. Actually, it's really for the community. We are really trying to create a mission field, and I believe that this summer, when it's 100 degrees outside, there are going to be families from this community that are going to be showing up in our parking lot and and walking into the splash pad to get wet and to cool off, and you and I will have an opportunity to become a missionary. So parents with young children... Take your kids to the splash pad and sit down there and determine you are going to be a missionary. In fact, begin to pray. Lord, help me be successful today. Now, some of us don't have young kids anymore. Uh, in fact, I, that's probably been one of the most difficult things for, for Becky and I here in Mustang. Uh, in in Guymon, when we pastored there, we moved there and our, our kids were were second grade through two years old, and they begin to grow up. And, and our kids became a natural place, or a natural, uh, well, they just helped us find ways to connect with people that we could share the gospel with. But we didn't have kids now that were young that we could go and take and be part of, of a ball field or something like that. But hey, we're grandparents now. And I bet that we can make arrangements with, with our kids that, hey, can we have the grandkids today? We want to take them to the splash pad because we want them to get a chance to play and to cool off. And I'm going to pray, we're going to pray that we have an opportunity to find the right person that God wants us to minister to and share the gospel of Christ. That's just one plan. But what are the plans that you're going to have? What are the ways? Um, Some of the things that uh, um, we're purposeful in in our Sunday nights at times, our our movie nights. Uh, We're trying to be purposeful to give opportunities for us to have a plan to bring our friends and neighbors to the church to see something that, that is, is good, 
It's powerful, and it's an opportunity for us to share the gospel. Even, and we don't even have to talk. We just got to do the invite. So what are we going to do? What is going to be our plan to be the trusted servant so that we can go and pray and see who God wants to put into our path to impact and to help bring them to the bridegroom. Now, I think that the story is significant in that it says, if she's unwilling to come, you're free to go. See, their response is not our responsibility. What is our responsibility is that we pray and look for the opportunity to extend the invite. So I, I challenge you this week, read through Genesis 24 again. And, and think of it in terms of not just a, a story of, of tradition or, or old, an old narrative, but think of it as a way, this is the way that God wants to reveal to us his desire for us to be his trusted servant who's willing to do what we are asked and that we will pray and seek him, looking for asking him to provide people into our ways that we can bring to the groom so we can celebrate at the wedding feast the marriage of people, the restoration of people who are lost with the Savior. Does that make any sense? Are you with me? Have you followed that through there tonight? Well, let's pray together. Father, here we are. I, I, I'm just thankful that you have given us your word. And... Uh, Sometimes, uh, to be real honest with you, Lord, it's hard for us to discover all that your word has to say for us. But I, I just believe that if we will really seek you and that if we will pray, that you will help us discover how the word, your word, is applicable to our life today. And uh, I truly believe that there are people out there that need to find a Savior and uh, that you're going to bring them, if we pray and seek you, and allow you to help us develop a plan, we'll have an opportunity to share your love with them. So, Lord, help us to continue to be the kind of body that becomes a be-we-do people. We love you tonight. Thank you, thank you for loving us. Be with all of us as we go through this week. And uh, Lord, truly bring someone into our path this week that we can share your love with. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Hey, thanks for being here today. May you have a great, great week. We'll see you Wednesday night or before. You are dismissed. Thank you for watching today online. It has been our privilege to share this time with you. I'm Pastor Terry Armstrong, and I want you to know that if we can do anything to assist you, any words that you would like to say, any comments that you would like to make, or anything that you would like to tell us about what God is doing in your life, please do not hesitate to give us a call. Our number is 405-376-2892. Or you can email me directly at terry at mustangnaz.org. Again, we just hope that today your spirit, your heart has been encouraged by the presence of God. And so now I just want to say to you, may the peace of our Lord and Savior reign and rule. And may he give you his calmness in the midst of your storms. In Christ's name we pray these things for you. Amen and amen.